Wow, would you look at that? Something tells me we're not in Anaheim anymore. This is amazing. We're actually somewhere I have never been in my entire life. Welcome to Lassen Volcanic National Park. Dude, look at that down there. Do you know what that is? That, my friends, is a bubbling paint pot, a geothermic feature, meaning that deep below our feet, deep below this mountainside, molten rock magma is superheating water, which is rising up to the surface in the form of steam and boiling water, boiling that mud down there, and even more impressively, this mud right over here. Oh my gosh, dude, look at that. That's insane, can you hear that? Dude, this is the weirdest thing ever because it's only in the upper 50s. It's kind of cold outside to us who've been down in 100 degrees all summer. But this boiling mud pot is actually so warm and steamy that if you stand anywhere too close to it, it almost feels a little too warm for this jacket. Dude, this is crazy. We're keeping quite a distance from other people and we're outdoors so masks aren't required. But the reason that Allie is wearing her mask is because this water boiling up from magma deep below the surface is mixing with several ingredients to create this mud pot here and one of them is hydrogen sulfide gas which as I understand it is one of the key ingredients in sulfur. So basically this entire spot and especially that steamy vapor right there stinks like rotten eggs. It's pretty strong when the cloud comes right at you but otherwise I don't really mind it. It just makes me really want hard boiled eggs. Dude look at this. This is insane. That is crazy boiling and you could feel the heat from up here against the fence. And it is actually really close and I'm wearing shorts so I keep worried about getting splashed. That would boil the meat right off your bones, Allie. Don't jump over the fence, okay? It's pretty cool to look at. Dude, I've never seen anything like this in person. Just, you know, mine train through nature's wonderland footage or videos of Yellowstone. This was sort of a spur of the moment thing deciding to detour to Lassen Volcanic National Park. But I'm already glad we did. This little location here is called Sulphur Works because, as you can imagine, the pioneers in this area once took advantage of the local chemistry to create an actual Sulphur Works. Look at that. It says here that they had a Sulphur Works Inn which included a bathhouse built over these smelly steamy vents. Trust me, that would have been one stinky bathhouse, but no longer. Now this is all part of the national park. And from what I understand, the only geothermic feature that is literally right on the roadside like this. Wow, dude, that is so impressive. There are many other features in the park, some of which we are going to try to see right now. And I'm glad we pulled over here on a whim to see that because that that was really cool. Now, as you may have gathered by now, Lassen Volcanic National Park is a long way from our home in Southern California, but we had to get out of the house. Otherwise, this was just gonna be too sad of a weekend. You see, we were supposed to get married just a couple of days ago. This would have been the time we would have been on our honeymoon if it wasn't for 2020. And so instead of sitting around at home being sad or being mad, we decided it's better to take a drive and get out for some adventures. Not a huge fan of some of the cliff edgy roads in this park, but I gotta say, it's definitely, definitely beautiful up here. Looks a little like heaven, which is ironic because the next place we're going, plug your ears kids, is hell. Bumpus hell, as a matter of fact. And we get there via a three mile round trip trail. Now I believe that right there is Lassen Peak itself. And Lassen Peak, I think, is the volcano that exploded all over this area in 1915. And there are plenty of park signs and brochures that point out that the magma and the molten rock and the volcanic activity here is not finished. It's just resting. Well, hopefully today is not the day it explodes again. Wow, this trail is really cool. Kind of steep. You can see where the car is parked just over there. I mean, it's steepish and a little busy today. Lots of people outside, but it's kind of nice. Right now, my GPS app says we are 8,215 feet in elevation. So the air is a little thin for us coastal people, but it is worth every shortened breath for just these views alone. Wow. And the road to Bumpus Hell is paved with the 
best scenery. You know, all in all, this trail is fairly easy. The weather is really nice. There's a lot more shade than I expected. There are more people than I hoped there would be out here. But there's always more people than you'd hope there would be in a national park, no matter what season it is. It's funny because we've gone a third of the way there already, and I can still see the car. I guess we got a lot more hiking to do. Wow, this is cool. It's almost like a little elven forest because the trees are so small. And look at this. We're just shy of a mile down the trail and finally we have our first view of Bumpus Hell. Wow, that is astounding. Oh man, dude, look at the color of that water down there. Look at all the steam coming out of the ground. This, this is incredible. This is sort of California's miniature version of some of the stuff you'd see at like Yellowstone, for example, where I've never been. So this is so impressive. The reason why this place is called Bumpus's Hell, later just shortened to Bumpus Hell, is because in 1864, a man by the name of Kendall Van Hook Bumpus, there he is right there, stumbled across these boiling vents into the earth and staked a mineral claim, hoping to make his fortune and possibly even start a tourist attraction out here. Unfortunately, one day as he was guiding some local people down here, including some reporters, I think, he took one wrong step, his foot broke through the crust of the ground here, his leg was covered in boiling mud, which was at least 240 degrees Fahrenheit, I think that's 115 Celsius maybe, causing extreme pain, severely damaging his leg, leading to its later amputation. And that is how Bumpus's little slice of heaven became Bumpus's hell. And now that it's called that, it's one of those places, kids, where you can officially come and say hell over and over again and your mom can't get you in trouble. Wow, this is so awesome. Listen, you can hear it all the way from here up on the hill. You can just hear the sound of that bubbling steam, that superheated water and mud, sound of magma, superheating water. It's like you're hearing the breath of the earth. Although actually, with the way it already smells again, it's more like hearing the burp of the earth. Yikes! This is so crazy because it'll get quiet and then you'll see the steam dissipate. And then you'll hear the steam bubbling up loud again. And all of a sudden, a thicker column of that crazy steam, like it's breathing. You gotta be very careful where you step around here. Don't wanna end up like old Bumpy. Luckily down below in the most dangerous area, they have those boardwalks. So hopefully we won't be losing any legs today. Look at this, even way up where we are, this ground below, it's hard to tell, is steaming. And it really smells, even when the wind's blowing the other direction. Oh, I just noticed you can see into some of the, the mud pots down there. Wow. All I can say is wow, man, the power of nature. We don't often think about magma and how hot the earth is inside. I mean, it's usually miles below our feet, but look at this, nature's fury. This is absolutely incredible. Of all the places I've been, and I've traveled a lot, I've never seen anything like this in person before. No geothermal type of stuff. I mean, like everyone else, I've seen tons of pictures of Yellowstone and stuff. And I kind of always wondered why it is that people liked Yellowstone and thought it was so impressive. But now that I see this, especially in person, I'm like, Whoa, the problem is I usually only see still photos and a still photo doesn't give you any sense of the massive scale Like look down at the boardwalk. Look how tiny those people are. It completely changes your perspective Once you realize how small they are next to rocks that look like pebbles from on top of the hill Well, dude, this is insane. The trail comes close to this little runoff creek just for a second one Look at the milky color of old Bumpus's water Two. If you look very carefully, hard to tell, but that is actually steaming even as it goes down there. I can see one little eddy there where there are some bugs swirling around. Here's a side note for you. There are tons of these little jumping spiders. Look at he's coming closer. They're not afraid. They like to follow you down the trail. Just what you've always hoped to find. Even the runoff all the way downstream from those steam vents, even the runoff 
is hot enough to be steaming. And this is crazy because it went from like a really nice cool temperature outside and then now that we're standing down here, the steam and the heat, I don't know, raise the temperature at least 10 degrees down here. It's insane. All right, we're gonna watch our step and not do any dancing. No YMCA out here. We are gonna be sticking to the boardwalk. Look at right there, I'm in the foreground, right by this rock. You can kind of see there's a little discolored area dead center of your screen. That steam is actually coming out of a little tiny hole right there, right, <laughs> right towards us. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It does smell funky out here, that is for sure. Oh, look at that. There's one of those little vent holes right there with steam coming out of it, right next to the boardwalk where people are walking by. That is really why you don't want to take even one step off the path. Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. I mean, it stinks, but it's gorgeous. I mean, come on, what do you think, Allie? You're not a big hiker. You don't go out into nature past the car very often. <laughs> But this was worth it, right? I mean... Yeah, definitely. Look all the colors and it's the... crazy. Uh-oh, here comes some of the steam now. The smell, doesn't it smell nice? Nice fresh air. Yeah. Ah, I kind of hope they don't find out the cure to the current uh, pandemic isn't breathing this stuff, because boy, trust me guys, you're not gonna like it. I kind of have a little bit of a headache. I mean, probably it's just because the elevation we are over 8,000 feet, we drove up from basically none feet from home. But I think part of it is I'm having a sympathetic headache because this sulfury smell smells a lot like gas, you know, when you, when your pilot light goes out and you get that weird headache. Weird. Wow, look at this, right off the boardwalk again. Another boiling pot of mud. In an otherwise pretty solid dirt hillside. So that's the thing, Bumpus was walking along over here, one wrong step, crunch. He's not around to ask anymore, but I bet if we could ask him, he would say, it hurt like hell. <laughs> like Bumpus hell! I wasn't saying a swear. Ooh, even the dried up steam and mud water. It's so multicolored, it's so crazy. Look at this. It looks like a Halloween lake. Yeah, like a witch's cauldron. Yeah. Dude, there are very few things I hike only a mile and a half to that I don't just think, why didn't you just build a road to it? You know, if you're hiking for hiking's sake, you want it to be a little longer, maybe a little more challenging. But this, this was totally worth it. And I'm glad there's no huge parking lot because it already feels like there's a lot of people here and we're here on like a weird off day during a pandemic. And it kind of adds to the whole mystery of the place. The fact that we had to come so far. It's so quiet, no, no traffic sounds, no helicopters. I mean, who knew a place called hell could be so beautiful? Doesn't look like hell. Sure stinks like it though, sure stinks like it. Dang dude, if we had a little more time, I'd be tempted to hike to cold boiling lake, but I guess I gotta have something to save for next time. Apparently this trail was actually closed for about two years while they did work on it and made sure that it was safe. It was sliding into mud holes and sliding down hills. I'm told on the old trail, the boardwalk used to extend more into these areas, but they became a little bit more unstable and you know, the National Park Service has a duty to provide us, the public, Americans, with uh, access to our open spaces and our natural landscape, but they also have a duty to protect and preserve it. And those things are, in fact, an absolute contradiction. So they always have to have a balance going on. But that's what makes the National Parks so great. See, the thing is, just like the Force, all things are better with balance, moderation, balance, it's why you need to hear two sides of an argument, it's why it's nice to have a little yin and yang in life, you know. I know this is an election year, so please don't take that out of context and make it political. I'm not a political person, but even there probably balance wouldn't hurt. Balance in all things, in a diet, in a weight, in weather, in experiences, balance. Balance in your life, you know, don't want to be too stressed out, don't want to be too bored, you know. Finding balance, that's how you find peace. It is insane to me the way that some of these holes are just like giant craters. Like, was there one big burst of pressure and steam that just blew that giant hole right there wide open? You could probably fit a semi-truck trailer into that hole downwards. I mean, it's huge. From the final highest overlook, actually, you can compare the size of adult human beings with the size of that pit. Look at it, it's gargantuan. 
and it is boiling like the dickens. Whew, Hallie stayed down there. The elevation getting to us just a little bit to switch from, uh, you know, sea level to 8,000 feet and then go hiking around. So she's missing out on this final overlook, but boy, I gotta tell you, it was worth the climb around the backside on the trail to see this. Look at that beautiful meadow over there. Nice little clean looking pond and then this crazy alien landscape. I'm right, just gonna take one last look here and listen to the sound of that insane bubbling and boiling. And then we'll have to make the hike back to the car. Whew. What a day. Not that I don't like it down here in Bump as Hell, but the Bump is smell, man. Oh, that'll get you. Yeah, it smells really gross. Let's get out of here. Yeah, 45 minutes in Bump as Hell is about all my nostrils can take. All right, guys. We'll see you back at the car. All right, I can see the car again. Not bad, according to the Gaia GPS app. Pretty much exactly three miles right on the nose. Took us about two hours and 20 minutes. We had about 500 feet of elevation gain or ascent. And of that two hours and 20 minutes, it said we stopped. Our stop time was exactly 50 minutes. So it was basically almost on the nose an hour and a half. Pretty easy trail, I'd say. It'd be pretty good for kids as long as you make them watch your step and bump as hell. Allie is not used to hiking. She walks about kid pace. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's about the family speed. It's not my fault I was born with short legs. That's true. I like going the family pace if I'm going with you. If I'm going with you. Yeah, all in all, pretty good. It took a lot longer to get up here than I thought it would because the speed limits in the park and right outside of it are very slow. And if you get a slow car in front of you, it's a windy, twisty, slow road. So do not be deceived when you look at the map, you're like, we'll get up there in a couple minutes. It will eat up more of your time. But all in all, I can say I highly recommend the Bump as Hell Trail. Was it like hell? A little. A little, a little, the smell. Yeah. Ooh, should have just called it Bumpus Smell, huh? Yeah. Man, this is a beautiful park that I would love to explore in much more depth, but this is a run and gun situation. We've both seen a lot of volcanic lava rock type stuff before and lots of nice forests before, but that geothermal stuff, that was new to me. You ever seen anything like that before? I think I saw a geyser when I was a kid, but I don't have like a working memory of it, you know? Definitely makes me very curious about visiting Yellowstone sometime. Oh, wow, dude, check this out. On the other side of Lassen Peak, this, all this bouldery rocky ground must all be from that 1915 explosion. Look how much shorter the trees are over here. And they're the only thing that's conquered all this rubbly ground. It's too bad drones aren't allowed here because I'm sure this would look awesome from the air. But we noticed we turned the corner and all the trees were suddenly shorter. You get this completely strange, uneven, uneroded ground. No dirt, all just piles and piles of rocks. Dude, and even from this open area, look at the size of that volcanic peak. Even Tommy Lee Jones would be impressed with that one. That's a volcano joke, like as in the movie Volcano. Deep cut, deep cut. Anyway, kind of an unusual adventure today. Not our normal, especially not Allie's normal to go out hiking in a national park, but we figured it'd be nice to try something and go someplace new today to distract us from the sadness I was telling you about in the beginning of this episode. We meant to get started a lot earlier and hope to do a lot more things today, but it uh, looks like the sun is starting to lower and we've got a long way to go because, spoiler alert, we've got other places we'd like to go, even more northerly places than this. Well, the pace picked up a little bit once we got down out of the mountains and out of the national park and back onto real highways and real interstates, but it turns out we still couldn't outrun the sunset. Thought we were going to be able to pack a little bit more into this adventure today, but Apparently, the sun is going down on our unusual adventure of today, right here in Weed, California. Yes, that's a real place. And yes, they sell plenty of t-shirts and bumper stickers and lighters to that effect. So, since we weirdly ran out of time and we still have a long way to drive in the dark tonight, I thought I would leave you here with this view of the Mount Fuji of California. The beautiful, the wonderful, 
Mount Shasta. And speaking of volcanoes, that cloud above it really makes it look like it's a volcano about ready to explode. Now I look at that and I say, what an unusual cloud, but apparently it's there all the time because in the pilot gas station over there, there were tons of magnets and postcards showing that cloud in various formations. I guess it just spins around on there. But anyway, soak in that beautiful mountain view, my friends, because you know what? You've done your duty. You know what that means. It means you can go home and sleep well. Make sure to check out all the links down below and stick around because we will be back with even more adventures. See you next time. Look at that girl. She's so cute. Aww. Allie! How did she hear me? Weird. She can tell when she's being loved and admired. Man, that just looks like the kind of mountain you want to climb up and throw a ring into. Sean Aston would understand. Like, isn't this insane? You're not a big fan of physical activity and hiking and running and all that stuff in the <laughs> first place, so I know you're tired. Yeah. But, <laughs> it sounded like I was just being mean. That went on for too long. Oh, okay, hold on. Later shortened to, later just shortest. Thought we'd be able to pack in more into this particular adventure, but it looks like we were caught with our pants. <laughs> what? Crater, dude. What?